Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, I would uh, like to welcome you all for this evening session. Uh, we are going to continue with our series uh, from the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. So we are um, looking at the lives of people who had a moment in their life. They were able to act according to the faith, according to the revelation they had, and they all made history in the respective times of their life. Hallelujah. And in the beginning itself, I asked one question. If Hebrews were to write today, whether our name will be there in this chapter by any means, I think we need to continue to ask that question. Otherwise, there will not be any relevance when we hear from these people's life. We may think that, okay, that's all part of the history. Our life is different. No. If Hebrews were to write now, or if we are to prepare a cloud of witnesses, whether our name will be there in one way or other because of the simple act of faith. We are going to look at another important person today. Her name is Rehab. By her identity itself, people were not that impressed because she comes from a different background. She comes from a not so good background. And especially from a Jewish perspective, to acknowledge a prostitute, it's, it's not at all possible. But the author of Hebrews is really bringing her character into this chapter number 11 and saying, by faith, even though she was a prostitute, even though her social life was not that great, she was outcasted because she welcomed the spies. She was not killed with those who were disobedient. Wow. A simple act of faith from her side made her the heroine of faith. When I say hero in her faith, she was part of the, the witnesses the Hebrew author is bringing here. I was really amazed by the statement. We are, going to, we are going to look very deeply into her life so that we'll be able to understand how she became the cloud of witness, how she became the hero in her faith. And not only in the Hebrews, when James is writing his epistle, he is bringing her, and in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute. Again, she was identified as a prostitute, justified by works. So we are seeing in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, by faith. And when James is explaining that faith alone is not enough, that has to be followed by works, which is based on her faith. And she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. James is bringing another aspect of that. And ultimately what happened, the historical context is written in Joshua chapter 2 and verse, Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 2 is before the conquer and Joshua chapter 6 is after the conquer. Let us look at the outcome 6 verse 23. So the young man who had done the spying, the chapter number 2, went in and brought out Rehab after the conquer. After, before they were burning the city, before they were completely destroying the city Jericho, they brought out whom? Rehab. Her father, her mother, her brothers and sisters and all who belonged to her outside the camp of Israel. Wow. She saved her entire clan, entire family by a simple act of faith. By, we may say that it is simple, but when we are going to analyze her life today, we will be able to understand that it was not that simple. It was a really, a really a supreme act of faith from her part. So we are going to look at, I just picked up seven acts of faith from her life. Seven acts. Even though it may look very simple, it is, a, it is narrated in chapter number two, if you can open your Bible and keep uh, Joshua chapter number two in front of you. It will be really helpful for me to go through the seven points and you have to come with me very fast because we have to cover a lot of things today. 
So seven acts of faith in Rahab's life. Number one, she treasured the information about Yahweh. Why that is a simple act of faith? Why that's an act of faith even? So she was able to gather the information about a God whom he and whom she has never served in her life. Right? How do we know that? If you read the chapter, sorry, verse number 10, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water. She's telling the spice of the Red Sea. For when you came out of Egypt, what you did to the kings and how did you cross Jordan? Or you, you're going, to, they have not crossed the Jordan yet, but she was very sure that they will cross the Jordan and they will conquer the city. We are going to see that. So look at the way she treasured the information, she treasured the, the, the fame of Yahweh, even though she was a Canaanite. Right? And I was reading a story about her. It's written in a very, very different way. I really liked it. It is like one day she went to a grocery shop and she overheard somebody's talking about a God. They were talking, no, one nation is going to come. And that God is so powerful. And she was out of curiosity. She asked, who is that God? And I said, imagine it, story. And when she heard about that powerful God, even though the people who would have narrated to her would have told from an historical perspective or from an information standpoint, but she started treasuring that information in a way that one day I have to be saved by this God. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 2, verse 19 and 20, there is another application of this in the life of Mary, the, the mother of Jesus Christ. When the angels told about the upcoming, about the, about the arrival of baby, the, 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 the shepherd, they were really, they were really uh, happy and you know, they, they were praising God and all of these things they had heard and seen. And after that, they left. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. That's the difference. So let me ask you one question. If you are hearing the word of God, when you are hearing about the might of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we are hearing about the mighty works he has done in the past, are we able to treasure those words? Hallelujah. Because when the time comes, you will be able to have faith based on what you heard. That's the reason why in Romans, Paul is telling that faith will come by the hearing of the word. And the hearing of the word will be coming by somebody preaching to them. And if somebody is have to preach, somebody has to go. And if somebody is not going, how will they will hear the word of God? That is the way Paul is connecting that. But here also somebody from an information perspective, I'm not saying that from a gospel standpoint, somebody shared here, but she heard about God of Israel, but she started treasuring that. And that was the starting point. That was the starting point. Hallelujah. Let me ask you the practical application perspective. Are we, are we really honoring the word of God? When we hear the word, we have the privilege to understand the word of God. We have the privilege to hear a lot of sermons. We have the privilege to understand, illuminated the word of God by the Holy Spirit. But are we treasuring it? If you are not treasuring it, if you are not able to store in such a way that it will not produce faith and work. But look at Rahab, even though she was a Canaanite. She was very much interested in knowing about Yahweh, the all-powerful God. Hallelujah. So that was the first act of faith which I was able to get it from the Joshua chapter number two. Now, moving on, because we have a lot to cover today. The second act of faith that was uh, also pointed out by the Hebrews author as well as James. She welcomed two unknown spies into her home. It's not easy. So this is my imagination. As soon as she heard the knock at her door, she opened the door and here stands two spies, two people, two men. And she asked, are you Israelites? They told, yes. Wow. 
Have you heard about God Yahweh? Yes, we serve him. Oh, then come. Look at the excitement on her face. The moment she identified these people as the followers or the, or the people of God whom she wanted to know, she immediately welcomed them into their house, even though she was, <coughs> even though they were unknown to her. Hallelujah. Another act of faith. Understanding the divine connection and being part of the plan of God. Hallelujah. We have learned that from, from uh, the, the people whom we have discussed, right, in Joseph's life, when, they, when uh, his dad asked him to go and give the food to his brothers, it was a simple act of obedience. And that was the turning point in his life. So he shared a prompting. To receive these people. And the same thing. There are a lot of. And a lot of examples like that. We can see in the Bible. I just quoted one. Luke chapter 10 verse 38. Now it happened as they went. That he entered a certain village. There were a lot of people in that village. And a certain woman Martha. Welcomed him into her house. And that was the turning point of that family. You know the history. Right. Mary became very close to Jesus Christ. And that family became very close to Jesus Christ. And when there was a tragedy in their family, Jesus came and resurrected Lazarus from the dead. Oh, praise the Lord. And it started with a simple act of faith from Martha's side. When Jesus Christ came to their village, they welcomed him. Like that, there are a lot of examples. Simon the Tanner welcomed Peter to stay in his house. Judah welcomed Saul to be, to be in his house for a few days. So my question to you, are we able to understand the plan of God, the sensitivity? We should be very sensitive to be part of these kind of acts. Otherwise, we will miss. But she was able to welcome them into her home. Moving on. She acted wisely by deflecting the soldiers of Jericho King. You may be asking, is God is approving a lie? Because she told a lie. Right? That's a very, well, very valid question. But look at, the, look at the limited knowledge she had. She was not part of the Mosaic law. She didn't know anything about this God. But within her limited knowledge, she acted wisely. That doesn't mean that God is approving lying. We should not take that way. She became the part of the family of Israel. We are going to see that later. But at that point, with her limited knowledge, she acted wisely. And that was a very courageous act from her side. Right? Because the two spies, sorry, the two soldiers were sent by whom? The king. And God was part of that plan. That is the reason why when she told that, yeah, they came here, but I did not know where they had come from. And in the evening, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. Just imagine those two soldiers told, okay, that's fine. Let us come to your house and do a kind of search. What would have happened? Right? Should have been a problem. Should have been trouble. But that time, she acted very wisely. And I strongly believe that even though she was not in Christ, even though she was not as part of the God's plan, God gave that Gentile woman a thought, a wisdom to act wisely. Again, I'm not approving her life. But she acted wisely because her limited knowledge was there. And within that limited knowledge, she acted wisely by deflecting the soldiers. What a great act of faith. Now, what is the practical application? 
we have to depend on god's wisdom we have to depend on god's wisdom several times he will give us the direction to talk to people but when jesus christ told the disciples when when they are going to persecute you when they are going to cross question you you don't have to worry what will be your answer the holy spirit will give you the answer at the right point of time so my question is are you dependent on the holy spirit to receive the wisdom instantaneously in your life that is a practical application and now being in the new covenant god will only work in the framework of the law no doubt about that but in that framework itself we need some special guidance and wisdom from god when we face some difficulties in our life which we have not faced before right god will give that wisdom immediate wisdom so that you will be able to act accordingly you will be able to talk or you will be able to think several several times in our life it has happened very simple thing but later we will think oh that time god only helped me to take the decision god only helped me to think that way god only helped me to talk that way she acted wisely by deflecting the soldiers of jericho number 4 she risked her life even after understanding the consequences of this act that is the that is very sacrificial from her part as i told before the two soldiers are coming from whom from whom from the king and if they find out if they find out that these spies were in her home or they are currently what will happen you can imagine she will be dead that's all as simple as that she will be dead no question about it because in the present context itself it's a criminal offense right to entertain spies of a different country because they are they are not going to come to have a vacation here they are going to come and conquer this land in few days they are going to come and conquer this land and they are going to kill and the number one thing at that time she has not talked to the spice about her salvation program still she was ready to risk her life wow right in the beginning if it itself he should have talked to them and told that okay if i am going to do like this you have to save me then it would have made sense but after this act only she is talking to them and then finally they are giving her a plan of salvation salvation in the sense means an escape route from the uh, from the uh, this um, uh, destruction but before that itself she knew that yahweh will not lead me what a great faith of a gentile woman no wonder she was mentioned by the hodder of hebrews as well as by james and we are going to see her see the see the the, the impact or the, or the outcome of her act you will be marveled how god has orchestrated this in her life she risked her life she risked her means she was ready to die as simple as that let me ask you a very important question even after knowing that it is the plan of god are you willing to take risk in your life if you are not you will miss the opportunity to become the bigger plan of god that point of time if you are convinced that it is the plan of god are you ready to take risk in your life leave about your you know uh, life at least to risk something in your life she was even ready to risk her life oh what a great of act of faith from rahab let me move on number 5 she confessed the might of living god yahweh even though she was a canaanite it is not only that she 
she she treasured the information she believed she believed how do you know that she was not telling that you know glorifying the past even but with that faith she is telling that in future also i strongly believe that god is going to conquer this land wow what a great faith 211 when we heard of it our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you the lord your god is god in heaven above and on earth below wow what a great revelation when i was reading that i was really ashamed god do i have that kind of revelation about my god she saying you are the god of heaven and earth and including this city and including me she was declaring the lordship of god over her life unknowingly are you all with me tonight our god is a big god but are we acknowledging it on a day to day life when we face some crisis when we come across some situations in our life are we able to declare the glory of god are we able to declare the supremacy of our god over the situation she is telling that i know your god is not a god of israel alone your god is the creator of this universe your god is a god in heaven above everything above everything above everything and not only that i know the lord has given this land to you already the war has not wait right jordan has not crossed she is prophetically saying to the spies don't be afraid okay don't be afraid she would have heard about the other spies also moses sent right out of the 12 10 were so fearful so she may be giving a message to these people you should not be like those 10 spies okay don't worry even though they may look giants but let me tell you you are ehova you are yahweh already gave this land to you be of courage she is encouraging them she is encouraging them <laughs> praise the lord when we start believing about our god we will start encouraging them look at the situation here spies were spies came to know how god is going to deliver this land to them but rehab is encouraging them rehab is encouraging don't worry your yahweh is a big god hallelujah what a great revelation for a gentile woman and that is the beauty of christian life we were gentiles we were aliens but god gave that privilege for us to reveal the glory of god which was only for israel at one point of time hallelujah hallelujah he crafted us so that we can also be partaking in that great revelation of yahweh through his son jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah are we able to appreciate the power the might of our yahweh god let me move on then she tied the scarlet cord in the window as a sign of her hope she told them i want to be escaped i want to be part of the salvation program can you help me they told yes we can help you but you should do one thing you should tie this cord the red scarlet cord over the window so that when we come we will be able to clearly see that if the if you are not doing that then we are out of this covenant or this this agreement and i was really happy the way she did if i would have been there i would have thought let me put it after a few days because what if people start seeing this they will ask what is that red cord in your over the window people will ask definitely and you now she is a prostitute but she was not afraid it is written the beautiful verse she sent them away and they departed 
Immediately, she tied the scarlet cord in the window. She didn't wait for one day. Immediately, she did that. Wow. Look at the faith. That night itself, she knows that it will take some time because they have, they, they have not even crossed Jordan. So let me put the, the, the day before they come to Jericho. She didn't do that. Oh, salvation is today. Salvation is today. Action with respect to God is today. Today, now, now, now. We cannot postpone for tomorrow. Oh, the urgency of the gospel. That is, the, that is what it is foreshadowing. It is showing that. To the gospel, we have to respond. To godly thing, we have to respond today, not tomorrow. Don't postpone. Immediately she tied. And the spies were very confident because they know we come from a generation who did that in Exodus while they were in Egypt. Remember that? The blood? Yes. So they were very confident. That is the reason why they suggested this. Exodus chapter 12, 13. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. They know that God will honor that. And the same program, it was only for the nation of Israel. Please listen to me very carefully. It was only revealed to the nation of Israel. Now it is being extended to Gentiles. Oh, praise the Lord. Now it is being extended to a Gentile woman because of her faith. The secret is being revealed to a Gentile woman. If you tie this red cord, you will be escaped. Hallelujah. Let me move on to the final one. She persuasively witnessed to her family about this rescue plan. She didn't keep quiet. She acted as an ambassador. She acted as a missionary. She was one of the wonderful missionary. Oh, praise the Lord. She was not worried about anything. She started telling her family and friends, one day Joshua is going to come. One day this land is going to be you know, destroyed. Do you want to be saved? Come to my home. Come to my home. And you may be thinking that it was easy. No, it was not that easy. Because she was so convinced she started acting accordingly. She knew that I want my family also to be saved. Let me ask you, do you have that concern? Do you have that concern? If you have that concern, are you ready to act accordingly? She was not afraid of her life. Later, a lot of people would have asked her, what is this all about? Why your family is always together in the, in the house? They are not coming out. She didn't know. This land is going to be destructed, but I know the secret. I'm not sure whether she should have shared with others also, and they would not have heard about this, or they would not have accepted it like Noah's days. But look at convincing a family itself is tough. We have an example from Genesis chapter 19, verse 16. I just has quoted that to, to bring the contrast. The Sodom and Gomorrah were about, was about to destroy, about to be destroyed. And the angels saying, Lord, please convince your family. And when Lord went to convince his family, they are saying, what they are saying, it is not going to happen. They thought they is telling joke. And because of the urgency and the love of God towards Abraham, look at what God did. And while he lingered, he was, was trying to convince them and they were not ready. The men, I mean, the angels, took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of the two daughters. Because the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and sent him outside the city and told, run! The angels were able to do that, not Lot. And that was done by Rahab. That is the reason why Lot's name is not there in Hebrews chapter 11. And Rahab's name is there in Hebrews chapter 11. Did you understand that? She was so convincingly, persuasively witnessing. Oh, one day this is going to be destroyed. Are you able to believe? They will say, no, 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 no. But she was able to save her family. 
they brought out of her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of his life. Seven acts of faith. She treasured the information about Yahweh. She welcomed two unknown spies. She acted wisely by deflecting the soldiers. She risked her life even after understanding the consequences of this act. She confessed the might of living God. She believed in the everlasting God, Yahweh. She tied the scarlet cord. She acted very fast. And she persuasively witnessed to her family about this rescue plan. And what is the outcome? Let us look at the outcome. Three important things. Number one, she and her family were escaped from the judgment. Only one family were escaped. The entire city was demolished. You know what was the, what was the strategy of Joshua? Completely destroyed. And Joshua told, if anybody is trying to rebuild the city, they are cursed. But look at Rehab and family. Oh, praise the Lord. They were escaped. The second important thing is that she and her family were received in the Israel nation. They got united. It is written that they live among the Israels to this day. But adopted. Oh, what a great privilege. This shows the adoption of us into the family of God. We were adopted by the blood of Jesus Christ. She was also adopted by the blood scarlet drop. Act of faith, act of faith. Are you able to comprehend this? Are you able to comprehend this? Hallelujah. God was showing the sign of redemption in the history itself so that we will be able to believe that. And sometimes I think, how can people say that there is no need of act of faith from people's side? Everybody will be saved. No. Look at this verse. She had to act. She had to act. She had to believe. And that is the same, same case today. If you are ready to share the gospel, people are ready to believe. They are ready to tie the knot, the, 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 the red rope on the window, so that they can be adopted to the larger family of Christ. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. Rahab became the part of the family of Israel. And finally, oh, this is a climax. She became part of the genealogy of our own Messiah. In Matthew chapter 1, 5, there was a person called Salmon waiting for her. She began Rechab. And Bo, sorry, she, 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 she began, began Boaz. Boaz began Obed, Obed through Ruth and Obed Jesse and Jesse David. So David came out of the lineage of Rehab. Rehab married Shal, and they gave birth to Obed, Obed Jesse, Jesse to David and David to Jesus Christ. Wow. It's all started with gathering the information about Yahweh, storing the information about Yahweh, cherishing the information about Yahweh, believing in Yahweh, and acting accordingly by risking her life to be part of the bigger plan of God. She never imagined in her life sure her name will be written in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. She never imagined. My dear brothers and sisters, God is expecting us to take an act of faith. Next generation will see that. Hallelujah. The simple act of faith of yours today, the outcome we don't even know. Rehab, you didn't even know the outcome or the impact of the decision. But now your name is being glorified. Now you are no more a prostitute. You adopted into the law of Israel. You understood how Yahweh operates. You understood the family of God. You have become the integral part of the body of Christ. By faith. By faith. My dear brothers and sisters, are we ready to take that step of faith? Like Rehab, God is waiting on us.
God is waiting on us. God has great plan about us, but are we ready to take that step of faith? Hallelujah. And God bless you with these words. Amen.